as Nelda likes to say, sometimes all it takes is a spark. The resting state of the human being is actually pain-free. And ultimately, that, you know, um, pain doesn't even mean tissue damage or tissue trauma. Oftentimes, uh, it's, it's more easy to think about pain as a request for change or a change in behavior. It's a nudge. It's just information about, like, if you, went out, you and I went out for a run or we were lifting and, and I was really slow that day and really just not my powerful self, you would say, well, what's wrong with you? And I'd be like, well, I sit up drinking with my friends or I'm super stressed or I didn't sleep very well. And, and you'd be like, oh, we can kind of connect those two things. Well, pain, most musculoskeletal pain is in that same level of category of saying, hey, pay attention here. Let's draw some attention. In fact, pain isn't even generated in your tissues. It's all a perception issue about your brain. Your brain is perceiving what's going on. And pain is such a complex, in, deeply personal experience driven by stress or nutrition or hydration or your family's beliefs or pain or your fear of pain or previous experience of pain. But what Juliet is pointing out, that one of the things that we can all do is change how our brain is perceiving our tissues just by restoring our ability to move. And so you actually have this really powerful tool in your, in your you know, arsenal, which you may not even recognize, which is, hey, something hurts. I'm going to just normalize my range of motion. I'm just going to improve how well and how easily I move. And your brain is so sophisticated, it says, hmm, that's different. Let's, let's downregulate threat. So, you know, what I want to do is just make sure we're, we're parsing out this idea of being useful, this idea of being durable. And pain is really the low bar, but sometimes that's the thing that gets us moving.